Hello, everybody. Welcome to Planet FPL Clash of the Correspondents. My name's James. And of course, on this COTC, we're looking forward to finding out which Chelsea and Tottenham assets we're going to be buying for the double game week that they have in game week 35. And they also both have a double game week in 37. So let's find out where we should be buying. Is it from the team that just lost 5-0 or the team that just lost 4-0? Let me introduce you to our Chelsea correspondent, Gary Mantle. Hello. Um... Yeah, should we do the timestamp already? It's 9 a.m. Wednesday morning. So yep. it's less than 12 hours since I was at the Emirates. And well, I was, gonna, I, I, was, I was actually going to say, were you still in the Emirates 12 hours ago? I presume you probably were. It's probably about 11 hours and 40 minutes ago or so, was it? Did you no, stay no, to I the stayed end? till the end. Yeah, I stayed till the end. Yeah. Fuck that, mate. <laughs> because <laughs> I, I sure as hell know that if Ricky Saunders was in the away end watching Tottenham at the Emirates and they were five nil down that he'd be gone mate uh Ricky how are you pal uh, yeah I'm very good thanks mate yeah very good yourself yeah not too bad thank you mate uh Gary go on then uh, what happened last night mate to be honest I'm not even that um I'm not that annoyed by it I don't know why you'd think I would be but I don't feel like we saw or learn anything that we didn't already know. Arsenal were a much better team than Chelsea. We already knew that. We'd put in quite a lot on Saturday. Um, and we just, we didn't have anything last night. And we just got destroyed by a team that was, they're far better. They were far more up for it. It was just, it was everything. It was just an awful night. And it was, that's it. It's the heaviest defeat that I've ever been to in person as well. I was going to say, is is a had worse than that? But you would tell me straight away you, you, that your team won six one at at White Hart Lane in nineteen ninety seven. Yes, that's right. I recall that not so fondly, actually. Um, Pochettino said before the game, it was obviously we heard the news that Cole Palmer was ill. We didn't know definitively that he'd be out, but Pochettino said that it's time for the other players to show that this isn't Cole Palmer FC. Uh, well, what what does that look like now? Uh, Cole Palmer FC, but I do prefer <laughs> I do prefer it to Loophole FC. So oh, okay. Cole Palmer FC will go with. But yeah, um, if if Cole Palmer had been playing last night, I, it's, it's not going to change the score that much. He's not the difference between us losing five nil and actually getting a result. No, but certainly you lacked a, an air of creativity. When oh, you did hundred percent moments, and actually, or being did. able to hold onto the ball up, like in the final third, it, et it could be easily forgotten. You looked like you were going to get steamrolled in the start. You then obviously did get steamrolled in the second half. But actually, for a large chunk of the, the first half, you actually played all right. But you we did. didn't yeah. only look like you were going to create at the no. same time. I didn't think. No, no, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't have um, any other creativity really, other than Cole Palmer. So very much from an attacking point of view, we are Cole Palmer FC. And since we can't defend, that means that we are Cole Palmer FC. Um, as you was in the away end, what was what was the reaction by people? I mean, I know a lot of people obviously went completely understandable, but you you would you'd be able to hear if, you know if there's anger. Where's it being aimed at in a moment like that? And that's the funny thing that there actually wasn't that much anger. And, and as you said, most people had left. I think most people already knew that there wasn't much. That was going to happen, but it was a lot of people just sort of shuffled out in silence. It wasn't like the wasn't anybody trying to start any booing. It wasn't anybody like getting particularly picked out. Um, I think the only one that I heard get any particular sort of abuse or like words said against him was Mudrick. But other than that, and I think that's because a lot of people are not sold on him in general. Cost quite a lot of money. Hasn't delivered much. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't think there would be anything really. particularly directed at the players because you are right. I mean, they they've been incredible. Unfortunately, we'll all have to sit here and admit that. Uh, in reference to Arsenal, I meant more in terms of the ownership or the manager. Was was there anything? No, and we have heard time? that in the past. No, and yeah. there was there wasn't anything like that. I think it was just a sort of almost like an acceptance. It's like all right, yeah. I mean, Is that though because you and Arsenal, you like besties, aren't you? No, not at all. It's because. <laughs> We hate losing to them all the time. They're still in. They're still one of our most hated Stop clubs. They're not our most hated then. club, but <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could. <laughs> and we, and we didn't earlier in the Rick, season. Ricky, you and I know, right? The Chelsea <laughs> that turned up at Arsenal last night, and to repeat, we're pre-recording this Wednesday morning. He's not going to be the Chelsea that turns up against Tottenham next Thursday, is it? It, it never is. It doesn't matter how bad they are. They always turn up for us every bloody time. 
if it is, then that will be the end of Pochettino. If well, we did that at home to Tottenham next week, that, that would be would, the end. That, that was the following Whatever. question. Obviously, we're not going to come and beat you 5-0, but if we did come and beat you, yeah. it, what's the reaction to that going to be under that circumstance? Especially if, say, you've lost at Villa in between as well. Yeah, that would he would get um he he'd um he'd hear about it basically. Um because also it's a home game, so you've got a lot more fans there. So even when half the stadium leaves, you've still got 15, 20,000 fans and they are gonna make their feelings known. Um yeah. I, I, like yeah, I think as soon as that press conference came out and he said Cole Palmer's not playing and Gusto might not be playing, I think we knew we knew last night, like we don't have enough in our squad. And then I looked at our centre back partnership last night. It's like this is this isn't going to be good. Well, this is what we mean about throwing the towering, because that won't be the centre back partnership against Tottenham next Thursday. Not a chance. It can't be. He's <laughs> an absolute madman if he does. We we've known for a while that those two haven't been playing that well. And in in the um recent games, it's been Chalaber and Thiago Silva. And they were the ones that played at Wembley. So I don't know why he would go back to these two for a crucial game last night we, like we already knew we were going even two weeks ago you could have told me that Palmer was fit we were still going to lose at the Emirates they are just a much better team than us unfortunately so doing it for that game is fine I'm I can't see him doing it even at Villa definitely not at home to Tottenham Thiago Silva's missus was tweeting again <laughs> she loves it doesn't she I don't know what her point was <laughs> like Thiago's 39 he played on yeah, I mean, it, to be honest, it, it, it was kind of understandable that Silva didn't start on Tuesday night. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know what she's hoping to achieve. I don't know what she thinks should have been done that wasn't done last night. Um, she, she was she, quite popular with like the Chelsea fans, and I think it's kind of it's, she's kind of ruining it a little bit at the moment. Ricky, how do you feel about Pochettino now? I don't care, in all honesty. Um, it, it's very much a meh. I was um, I was quite excited about the prospect of him coming back last season. Um, well, sorry, to us, you mean season. just for clarity? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, maybe a bit of a uh, bit of nostalgia more than anything else. In all honesty, remembering uh, the good times, and then I think it was a conversation with you uh, or, or one of my other mates possibly. But then I remembered that it wasn't all good times and, and the last few months was actually pretty shit. And it was kind of a realisation that look, if we get him, it'll be all right. If we don't, it'll be all right. I'd rather have him not have gone to Chelsea. Uh, that did annoy me at the time. But now it's, yeah, I don't really care. He, he hasn't pulled up threes at Chelsea, um, despite having uh, a little bit of money to play with. So, yeah, what was was he all that? You know, so so sorry for the potch lovers out no, there. It was it was great for us, wasn't he? But it I think it's, it's easily forgotten that the last nine months was a complete car crash, yeah, actually, was uh, which was hidden by the fact we somehow, got let's to the be Champions honest, final, flipped yeah. our way to a Champions League final, basically think, on some miracle think, moments. Well, I think as well, James, uh, something that's also overlooked by by some people, um, it all went to shit when the doctor left. Oh, you don't need it, to tell me that, mate. It was almost like. Um, if we hadn't have had Dembele, we wouldn't have had that team. Yeah, you know, he left and it all went to pieces. So was it Poch? Was it Dembele? Was it a bit of the both? I don't know. It, it does annoy me to see him walking around in a in a in a Chelsea tracksuit, but I'm not I'm not fussed, mate. I I think um, we've probably got the better end of the deal right now, if I'm being honest. And that that kind of cheers me up a little bit. Gary, this feels like your cue to mention the stat that you mentioned to us <laughs> before we started. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, well, I can start at least to bring me some joy. You've had one victory at Chelsea since 1990, uh, which was, uh, it was Conte's uh, second season, so that's 2017-18. Once again, Conte was in charge of Chelsea, so last time we did this podcast, me and Ricky, which amazingly was last season, and the managers were Conte and Tuchel, and it's easy to forget that that wasn't about four years ago. That's the only last Chelsea season. manager. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the only Chelsea manager that, that lost at home to Tottenham was in the Tottenham dugout. And now this season, I'll timestamp this again. It's Wednesday morning. The game is eight days away because you know what we're like. But currently, the only Tottenham manager that has ever won at Stamford Bridge is in charge of Chelsea. Uh, uh, yeah. Not ever, but you know, in the last 34 years. Yeah. 
Uh, Ange, Ange hasn't been a Stanford Bridge yet, though, so yeah, it, it matters little. Um, you mentioned it, though, Carrie and Sirius. You said he's eight days away. You wouldn't change, would you? <laughs> it's a bit tongue in cheek. No, we, uh, we, we wouldn't. I don't think we would. They've always said there's going to be an end of season review, and nothing that dramatically bad has happened to uh, say uh, that after we've just uh, lost uh, five. It's worth saying for clarity. I know okay. that you're very much you don't want to change. You, you you want to give them at least the, the, to start the next season. I think it's fair to say. That's how I currently feel. But if we lose at home to Tottenham and we lose at home to West Ham, then I'm not going to be defending him. Okay. And that would, that would change. Like, we're in the position now where we should come at least seventh. I haven't actually checked the table because that's not really what you do after you've just been spanked 5-0, is it? But so I don't true. think we'll come above Newcastle, but we should maybe Man United. <clears throat> But if we end up finishing like 10th, 11th, then we're going to be like, have the players given up on him? Is it even worth him starting for next season? The reality is, like, taking the emotion out of it, he should be given next season as well, I think. I don't, I don't particularly disagree with that, actually. Um, you're three points behind Manchester United le- level on games played. You're also three points behind Newcastle. I, I agree that I'd be surprised if you finished above Newcastle from this stage. United could do anything, couldn't they? They could win like mm-hmm. five or six or they could lose five or six. Sort of feels like that. Um, we don't know what is going to get you into what yet. It looks like it's probably going to be sick for Europa League. So is the target mm-hmm. here the Conference League therefore, Gary? I think they still want to qualify for Europe, although then there's still issues regarding finances if we do, which I don't understand. I, I have I, heard some speculation you wouldn't go into it if you qualified for it. What, mm. what, what's all that about? Well, because UEFA use FFP and we use PSR and they're slightly different. And I don't think we'd necessarily meet the FFP. Oh, wow. And it's similar to AC Milan had it a couple of years ago, didn't they? It's, it's something so you might get lines. stopped from entering, essentially. And I guess that, yeah, that's going I, to be the same for the Europa League if you got, if you qualify for that as well, right? And I think what it would be, I, I don't know. I haven't looked into it enough because, um, I don't know, it gets a bit boring to be honest, isn't it? But if if we did try to enter it and then got stopped, it's like it's worse than if we just chose not to enter it or something like this. I don't know. You'd have to ask someone that's into like the financials, which I'm not. And I don't understand. I don't know all of UEFA's rules. Um, but yeah, it's no guarantee that even if we finish sixth or seventh that we'd actually even play in Europe from what I've heard. Okay. Interesting. Um, Ricky, I'm going to ask you a brutal question. Would you take defeat at Stamford Bridge next Thursday if it meant avoiding defeat on Sunday against Arsenal? Uh, yes. I don't really need to think about it too much. Um, I dislike Arsenal more than I dislike Chelsea. So that's, that's quite straightforward, really. And it has the added benefit of uh, it could well very well stop us winning the title. So two birds with one. But would we accept a point over the over this double game week? I think if we've got any um we we, we don't have many hopes of, of Champions League left. But if we want to get Champions League, we've got to get something out of these next two games. We can't lose both. Um there's yeah, we need to get something somewhere. But if if Villa beat Chelsea Saturday and then nine points clear, one point from the two is uh, no, it's it doesn't, not really, cut it, doesn't make it? any difference. Look, fifth, fifth is 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 pretty safe in all honesty. Fifth or sixth doesn't really matter because both will, will look like getting into the Europa League. So, I mean, it's it's not a case that we're on the beach, uh, certainly not. But it doesn't really matter at this stage unless we go on a a massive losing streak and lose all of our games. Uh, and United or Newcastle somehow catches. We're going to finish where we are, pretty much. Well, from the games left. We lost, obviously, heavily to Chelsea in unique circumstances. Um, lost 4-1, could have lost about 10-1, and yet still had our heads held fairly high afterwards. Yeah. But the other really difficult games we've got, i.e. against the top three, drew at the Emirates, drew at the Etihad, beat Liverpool at home, controversial circumstances, asterisks. So, I mean, from the four games there, five points, then if you were to beat Burnley, Sheffield United, that's 11 get you to 71, Villa on 66. I've said I think Villa only need four points from four games left. Mm. It, looks, it looks difficult, doesn't it, Ricky? It does look difficult. And and one thing that the stats won't tell you, James, at the minute, this is a very different Tottenham team. Um, we're a, a team pretty much on our knees just now, fitness-wise. 
Um, when we went to the Emirates, we were on the crest of a wave. Um, City, not so much. You know, we went there with four fullbacks. Um, and uh, Liverpool, once again, crest of a wave. We're a team. We've we've got niggles. We've got injuries. Madison hasn't been the same since he come back. Son hasn't hasn't been the player that we know he is for the past month or so now. I mean, it's just everybody. Um, it's the end of a long season. Um, a, a season of change and whatever else. And I think they're mentally and and physically knackered, mate. And we're not going to get the same performances against these teams this time around as what we did in the first games. But why why are there fitness issues? around Tottenham. We went out the Cups early. We had no European football. I mean, we've basically got a two-week, 15-day gap from Newcastle defeat to the Arsenal game. Why? I think with with, with niggly injuries, uh, players like, like Madison and Son, they get fouled an awful lot. And I think over the course of the season, you know, 10, 20 kicks to the ankles every game is, is going to take its toll. And I think they're just, they're just sore and, and not... not but yeah, they're not able to, to to run, change direction, sprints as effectively as what they were earlier in the season. By all accounts, Ange's uh, training regime is is I won't say brutal, but it's it's fitness heavy. You know, there's there's a lot of, of cardio work and whatever else, and and we've seen teams before that you know they do a lot of running all season, and towards the end of the season they start to lose their shine a little bit. And I think it's they're still adapting to uh, to the new fitness levels, uh, to his new style of play. And I think they just, just ended up now being a little bit jaded. We have had a lot of injuries. Um, so we've had players coming in, going out. They've got niggles or, you know, players not playing together. And, and that takes its toll as well. It's just, it's, it's, quite, it's just a mixture of things, I think, mate. But we're not, we're certainly not playing anywhere near as well as we were uh, first 10, 15 games of the season. Not, not even close I mean, Andrew spoke about rhythm being a problem. Are you not having a, a, enough games? And to count your point about the likes of Madison and Son getting kicked, you know, so did the likes of Saka and Odegaard, unfortunately, right? And I mean, Jesus, Gary Hackard was Odegaard Tuesday night. Well, I didn't see him get kicked because we didn't get any near him. So. <laughs> Unless that's not, that's Andrew, not I, about... I, I didn't actually see you make a tackle at all, I don't think, other than Nicholas Jackson's one. How did he escape um... the yellow card? Have you seen it back? Obviously not. It, um, it, it could have been red easily, back. mate. Really, yeah. And, yeah. and and I know that um, Cucurella loves a tackle as well. Um, so, I, But otherwise, no, nobody. I didn't see anybody else putting a foot in. Uh, Alfie Gilchrist would have done because he loves it, but he couldn't get near anyone either. He was a bit out of his depth last night, unfortunately. No, nah, he's a young boy. You don't, you don't want to it's his debut. It's his first, his first ever start for Chelsea. Yeah. And it's in the Emirates against the team there. Yeah. We don't need to talk about that. No, let's not no. talk about them much anymore. And it's, it's it's probably best as well, James, not not to mention uh, uh, Saka when talking about niggly injuries that mean a player's got to limp off. I, did well, that's how bad we night? were last night. He walked off. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair game, that, isn't it? Uh, dear. Right, Ricky, is, are you going to get a bit frustrated with Ange? I don't. I don't need to clarify that you you love him. It's fairly clear. But you, is he beginning to kind of frustrate a bit? Yeah, with, is a certain, bit. with certain things. Yeah, it is a little bit. He's um, he's he's he's, he's a very stubborn man, clearly. Um, and is it the thing that gets me most? And I'm sure it's the same for you. It's his in-game inflexibility. He won't adapt anything to suit what's going on on the pitch, or or, or very little. Yeah, you know, we we we've got a style of play. We play it. That's it. And that was typified in the reverse fixture against Chelsea. You know, we we play this this high line, which look, I love to see, and, and I know that you do as well. It's 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 fantastic on the eye. But at no point did he alter his tactics. And and I I tried to, as you would have expected, I got quite a bit of stick uh, from from uh, Chelsea fans. Um, and I tried to defend as much as I could, but even I was laughing at myself trying to defend. I was playing a high line at four one down with nine men. And, you know, <laughs> but but that, that 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 didn't piss me off. It, was, that it didn't was piss fine. me off at the time, it, but no, and it was you, also like uh this is who we are now, like yeah. we're gonna take and um, and we have said we said it at the start of the season, it didn't really happen. We said we'll get some slap ins when you don't expect it. We've just had two very recently. I mean it yeah. kind of sums up Tottenham that they followed the victory at at Villa, by then the 3-0 at Fulham, 
playing for 10 minutes at West Ham and, and drawing and easily could have lost and then got destroyed at Newcastle as well, despite having three quarters of the ball, basically. Yeah. So I think when you when you go to them away games, that then starts knocking at you a bit, I think, certainly from my perspective. Well, I mean, we, we both went to the Villa game and, I mean, I don't remember a better away performance uh, at all. for Well, at least for a very, very long time anyway. And then to follow that up with Fulham, it, it is it's very frustrating. I, uh, I I can't you know you, you can't put the blame all on Ange. You can't put the blame all on the players. I, I don't know what it is. Is is it a mentality thing? Um, you know we've just done this to Villa. Fulham will be easy. I I don't know, but there there does seem to be an inflexibility with tactics. Um, subs can be quite late as well, uh, and sometimes questionable, but. I think we need to remember as well that he's uh, this is his first season in a in a in a new league and he has managed all over the world and he's, he's you know he's been successful but this is by far his his biggest assignment and it's in by far the best league he's ever managed in and I, I think that takes a little bit of time to to get used to as well and and we might forget that a little bit he's he's got no history of playing or managing in this league and you know you could have he would have seen games on the TV like we did but other than that he's, he's coming cold really. I think in fairness to him as well, I, I've said this in the past, particularly in a number of home games, when you consider how Tottenham have improved in second halves in home games, yeah. actually he has made a lot of substitutions that have impacted the game positively absolutely, as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's, let's, he, we remember the ones that uh, that he got wrong, but yeah. let's, you know, it's sometimes hard to remember the ones he got right. He has got a lot right. But look, I, I've just spent the last couple of minutes having a little bit of a mini pop um, but I love this Tottenham team a hell of a lot more than I loved the one last season. You know, we we have progressed and moved on, and and it's only going to get better from here. I think. Yeah, agree with that, Gary. Rivalry aside, how do you view Tottenham at the moment? I still think that next season I would want to finish above Tottenham, and I think that would be a reasonable expectation. Ricky, how do you view Chelsea rivalry aside at the moment? <laughs> um, I'm concerned by them. Uh, well, uh, actually, as in, as in a threat, concerned, or concerned for them and by them is it a threat? Yeah, absolutely. They've got some fantastic players that, as they you know they they play and train more together, they're going to get better and better and better. And I think Chelsea could be a not not maybe a title threat next season, but they could be um, you know there or thereabouts pushing. And yeah, look, they're going to be knocking on the door for Champions League without a doubt. There's no question about that. Um, worried for them. Well, I'm not worried for them, but how long can this spending go? You know, where does it end? What? What? I mean, you know, Gary said at the start about Chelsea may not even be allowed in a European competition because of the state of their finances. I don't ever remember that. It's not from an English team anyway. That's That's absolutely uncharted territory for English teams. I mean, I don't need to tell you, Gary, that's piss poor if that does happen. Yeah, and, and it's our own fault. And I wouldn't expect or ask for any sympathy from anybody. Like, the rules have been there. We have gone way over the top with our spending. There's only so many hotels that we can sell, which is two. And we've done that. So if, where else are we going to... I don't know how else we're going to make up the deficit. Build, build another one, maybe. <laughs> and then sell, <laughs> sell that. <laughs> Might be the way to go. Okay, I think uh, a lot of the guys will be waiting for the fantasy chat. So first thing, Gary... This won't uh, take long. <laughs> I, I think you might be surprised. Let's, let's, let's end this in 20 minutes. Um, Cal Palmer, Gary, just illness or have we heard anything to the contrary on that? All I'd heard was illness, although I did hear rumours that he was playing with injury on Saturday. He looked like he was limping yeah. in the first minute. Yeah, and then played the rest of the game. And yeah. and it was an injury as well that like I think it was it like a thigh injury or something that they'd said I don't know someone um, it was something that hadn't come up before um, he does get a lot of rough treatment now um, I've noticed it certainly in the last few weeks which is obviously going to happen if you stop Cole Palmer you stop Chelsea um, so I don't I don't know it wouldn't surprise me if there is something uh, but the official word is that he's ill but then again Robert Sanchez was ill. And now he's in partial team training. And this happened four weeks ago. So who knows? But I don't, I don't, I don't know. I All I can go on is that what we've been told is that Palmer is ill, which means he'll either play against, it should be at least back for Tottenham. Hopefully back for Villa. Who will you be captain in FPL this week, Ricky? 
Um, difficult one to answer because I haven't finalised my wild card yet. I presume Cole Palmer will be in it. Then. Uh, current, yeah, unless there is something that comes out that he's going to be out for a couple of weeks at least, then absolutely he'll be in it. Yeah, hundred percent. And captain. <laughs> In all, all things being being equal, yes. Uh, if there's a doubt about him, then I probably can't. Okay, I'm going to sell it to the listeners and viewers like this. Cole Palmer will play against Tottenham next Thursday on one leg if he has to, and that will be enough <laughs> to captain him. That's my view. Gary, do you agree or disagree with that? I hope you're right. Well, I, I hope you're wrong. I hope he's got two legs. But I'm hoping that he's going to play against Tottenham because we need him to. I hope he's got two legs after next Thursday. I hope I, my vi- I end up with my vice captain, Sonny, and his three points or four points that he'll get this week, Ricky, as my captain instead. Is there a, a Tottenham captaincy shout here? I mean, there's there's enough people with to see Palmer's sort of yellow or orange flags going into the weekend, if that's the case, are going to, which Chelsea player instead? I think naturally we'll look at, at Hume Ming Sun, right? Yeah, they, they, they will do. Um, I wouldn't advise it, in all honesty. Um, I've I've seen nothing from Sonny in the last month that would suggest that he's worthy of even being in my side, never mind being the captain. And I'm I'm currently on wild card and currently Sonny's not in my side and not in my thinking. Wow. I mean, I've said similar, but he probably is still going to go in for me. It's, I've, I've, I've got to tell I've, I've nailed down all of my players bar four. And they're the two Arsenal defensive. Do I need both or either? And they're Salah and Haaland. Okay. And at the minute, the trade-off for me is, do I want to get rid of Salah to bring in Sun? No, probably not. Okay, that's fairly big. All right, in that wild card then, Ricky, at the moment, um, how many Chelsea? Uh, currently two. Um, I am trying to get my head around um, the thought of signing Nicholas Jackson. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that or not. Uh, actually, no, no, sorry, sorry. Currently free, currently free. Um, uh, Palmer, Gusto, and Petrovic. Double Chelsea defensive? Yeah. Gary, thoughts on double Chelsea defensive? <laughs> um, it's if you have to, but try not to. Nobody <laughs> has to. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm in a bit of a different situation to you, James. I've got my bench boost, so I'm looking at players that are going to have two games in 37. So um, that that's most of the reason why I've gone gone down that route. Okay, I hear that. Which Tottenham players are there at the moment? Currently? Yeah. None. But I did you a... You ain't going to go with none, mate. No, of course I'm not. Look, I did a very... I, 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 Activate my wild cards uh, as soon as I could do on Saturday. Uh, brought in some players who I thought were going to be immediate rises, and I haven't looked at it since. I'd be very surprised if I'm not going to take Brennan Johnson with me. Um, Richarlison, I, I want the punt, but I don't know if I'm brave enough for the punt, because uh, it is a punt. So rather than going double Chelsea defensive, you, you could put a Tottenham defensive in, because you know we look very oh, sturdy we look solid, and mate. steady yeah, super and solid. solid yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And our, yeah. our, our our main attacking threat from uh, defence is is, uh, is out. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'd I'll be going nowhere near our defence and nowhere near our midfield. But well, uh, Brennan Johnson, you know, he's he's class attacking player. But yeah, um, aren't yeah. you like fourth or fifth best for goals conceded this season though? Despite what everybody says about Tottenham defence. Yeah, like, but it feels like it's... everyone bar Arsenal has been shit. In fairness, Gary, I right, would but... be stunned if that was a true stat. That I doesn't wouldn't. sound like it's a true stat to me. I wouldn't be. Well, the fifth in the table, Ricky, so it's not that far-fetched, is it? it could, but it used to be that it was only Everton that were better, and then someone helped you out with that, didn't they? One of our better nights. So I don't know. But I know Tottenham are, Tottenham are well up there, despite what everybody says about their defence. I think they've got... I'm not saying it's a good defence. I'm saying they've got just as much a chance of keeping a clean sheet as pretty much anybody, which good is God. like no, with, about yeah, 10%. Of the teams above us... Um... Villa have conceded more, and of the teams below us, only United have conceded less. So yeah, we are go. fifth best. There wow. You go. Yeah, there's some it anomalies. Doesn't, in this it doesn't league, feel like that, but that's probably recency bias. Where I've just seen us, you know, shipping goals for fun recently. So which is the same with Man United, off, maybe. Okay, it's Gary said you... they were fourth, would you? Yeah, uh, Gary, are you on wild card yourself this week? 
Yes, and I still have bench boost. Okay, right. But you tell me first which Tottenham players are going in, do you think? For me? Yeah. It's um, I've still got Porro, so it'll depend on his injury news. Because I bought yeah. him at 5 million, so I haven't got rid of him yet. And then it's Son and Johnson. Um, my front eight in mine is the same as the front eight that you did in your video. Oh, wow. That's uh, quite interesting. I, I, I think mine might be changing. Um, so, and which free Chelsea? He's, he, there is free Chelsea, right? So it's Palmer and Jackson, and then either. Well, this is the last one's to be confirmed. It's a defensive one. I feel like now Petrovic is probably going to keep the shirt. I think, but I still, still there's something niggly. Yeah, I'll tell you Just what though, it was. It was the, his inability to save that shot at the near post after four minutes last night. It was like, oh, yeah. But then he played. He did all right for the rest of the game. He actually made a lot of despite so. despite what like, what happened. Fight. Like you look at those. Yeah, some of them. It's like it's not him anyway, is it? So yeah, so I know. But there is still that that slight doubt. Gusto, the doubt is over the injury. Otherwise, I think he would play. The only other ones that have played consistently are Kukurea. Um, if we went to a back three with a view to starting to play a back three, then that's quite a good way of getting Chilwell in because I don't think he likes him as a pure left back. Um, and we don't know what's happening with Colwell. And then Trevor Chalaber is the only other one that's played quite a lot. And then he was benched last night, which I didn't expect. So it sort of rules him out. So it's slim pickings. It's probably either Petrovic or Gusto. And so if, Gusto's, if we get an update if, that Gusto's fit, then if I think Gusto's good. fit, money aside, is that the best defender choice? Yeah, I think so. If he's out, and that's confirmed that he's out, your opinion would be best choice? Probably go probably go Petrovic. Okay. But from the defenders? Because I know yeah. just know there's a lot that are going to go Anana and Vicario by default, I think. Yeah. Um see, and that's where it's like there's three that will sort of mix. Because if I go Petrovic because I've got Poro, I don't want double Tottenham defence and I don't want double Chelsea defence. So between I, I would say that Chalaber is probably the one that's most likely to play the most games now. I mean, the one that I'm suddenly tempted by, if, if and for me it's clear, Gusto, is, is Cucurella, right? Particularly if Ben Chilwell's ruled out for a while, right? Well, that's also and that's also true. And um, Levi Colwell, because we did used to play him at left back as well. Um, I I think Cucurella's, he, he was also on my mind. Um, if Chilwell was ruled out, then I'd say that Kukura is probably safe. And yeah, he'd be... He's, I mean, he gets books every game. But if he's going to play, then he'll probably do what you want. And he does get forward a fair bit these days. You don't feel like he's going to finish when he gets there, though, do you? But he, he might... No. He, he might grab you an assist one of or something. Games, but yeah, exactly. But I don't feel like any of our players are going to finish when they get there. Other than I Cole Palmer. Reality, do you have... Expectation of a clean sheet in this double game week, Gary? Uh, certainly not. No, 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 I don't. Um, I was actually trying to think, do I have an expectation of a clean sheet for the rest of the season? Not sure I do, to be honest. Wow. The only one that one might say would have been... but So the, the games that we've got left in, we've got Villa, Tottenham, West Ham at home. Okay, West Ham, maybe. West Ham 36, maybe. And then it's uh, Brighton away, Forest away, and Bournemouth at home. Bournemouth at home is the last game of the season. It all goes out the window then anyway, doesn't it? So who knows what will happen. So you're um, saying one clean sheet from six is your prediction? That's my prediction, yeah. Um, and that would be, even if it's not West Ham, I think in one of these games we'll get a clean sheet. But I think in only one of these games we'll get a clean sheet. We're not a good defensive team. Ricky, Tottenham clean sheets from the six games? Uh, maybe two at the end of the last two games of the season. What I... City and Sheffield United? Oh no! It, you mean Burnley, Burnley and Sheffield yeah. United? Yeah, we, obviously we're not going to get a clean sheet against it. No, I don't know. We've got a very good record at home at them uh, in league at least. Um, look, Arsenal will score, Chelsea will score, City will score, uh, Liverpool will score. <laughs> so yeah, two, two at most, absolute most. But none this way. <laughs> no, no, I can't see it, mate. I really can't. So the Tottenham injury update, um, obviously Udogi we know is out for the season, that's confirmed. Um, Pedro Porro, Paulo Kiefer tweeted on Tuesday night saying he's, he's in training. 
and so's Richarlison as well. So that sounds promising on the two of them. I bet you won't get 100% clarity on Friday, no. however. But if they're training now, my instinct would be they're good to participate. Under that circumstance, Poro would definitely start, wouldn't he, Ricky? He'd, he'd get risked. There's no doubt oh, yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If that's the situation, who do you think plays left back? Well, after obviously the, the, the natural choice uh, would be Ben Davies. But after listening to what you were saying uh, the other day about uh, Emerson, um, yeah, he, he could he could do, look he, he could he could even play Van der Ven there and play Dragashin as a centre back. I have heard that suggested, and I yeah. think that's the option I like the least. By the way, I I'm I like playing. it. I, I, I want I'm to not convinced of Radu at all. And, well, I'm not, and and I, I want to see Mickey Van der Ven there because I want to see him go up and down that wing. But I don't want to see Dragas hit in central defence. He he hasn't convinced me in the slightest. Um, no, Mickey's got to play centre back the way we play, mate. Yeah, absolutely. And I think look, I, you you made a very good point. Um, Emerson is is solid defensively, the best defender. Well, he was the best defender we had. Obviously, I'm I'm going to add in you know Mickey in there now. Uh, you know, but he's he's solid. He's dependable. Um, I would against teams like uh, like Arsenal, who we, you know they're going to batter us. I'd, I'd probably want Emerson Royal in there. In all honesty, yeah, it's just for me. It's looking at the players coming up. I mean, the, the next three right wingers we're going to face are going to be Saka, Palmer, or Madureki, depending on how Chelsea set up, and then Salah. Yeah, like I don't really want that going up. At Ben Davis, not that I want it going at Emerson Royal, but in those one v one moments defensively, I. I just have he, a little bit more faith in Emerson, frankly. Yeah, he, he's better equipped to be able to deal with them. Um, not saying that he will deal with them, of course, before I get any comeback, but he's better equipped to deal with them. The flip of that is, to counter that, Ange thinks about what we do with the ball way more than he does without it, and Ben yeah. Davis's distribution with the ball is fine. It's good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that might be how Ange views it as what's way more important. <laughs> So, no, I'm 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 not going to try and, and tell Andy how to do his job. He he knows this a lot better than I do. If he thinks that's about best setup for the team, I'll go with it. Um, it would just worry me with yeah those three right wingers going against Ben Davies. Uh, we love the guy; he's brilliant, but yeah, he's he's not equipped and well enough to deal with that. If Poro was ruled out, which one would you say to guys who wanted a Tottenham defensive player? <laughs> Nobody. You you can't go look with even fully yeah, fit. But the problem is, Ricky, it's the same with pretty much all six teams who double in oh, thirty seven. Yeah. We're all suddenly gone, oh my god, Newcastle kept two clean sheets in a row, completely forgetting how shit they'd been at the back for like three, four months, right? Yeah. Well, do you know what? The, the, for me then, um it, it goes against kind of the, the rules of FPL where they say never pick a centre back, but I'd go for Van der Ven. Um He's uh, it's in some of these games. Possibly our best chances may come from set pieces. Uh, he's a big lad. He's popped up with a couple of goals already this season. Um, he's he's got the potential to get you bonus points because he makes a lot of tackles and interceptions. So I, I would I'd probably go with him. I I couldn't. You're not you're not going to get any attacking returns from Emerson or Ben Davies or anybody else that plays at fullback um, that aren't called Ndoggy and Poro. So there's no point in game for for fullbacks. I think I think a lot if if Poro was was ruled out and people may do this anyway, he's just go with Big Vic in goal. Now I, I think a lot are going to lean into that because of what I said about the goalkeeper situation across the six teams that double in thirty seven. They're going to end up with like Vicario and Onana as the only two that, barring injury, will definitely play twice. Yeah, in thirty seven. If you yeah, are so going, if you are going Vicario, kids. Don't go with a second Tottenham defensive. No, well, I've, I've, so I've currently got Petrovic. That that spot is 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 open. Um, Anana's my other goalkeeper with thirty seven in mind. Um, if I made the switch to Vicario, that frees up a Chelsea slot. Which, to be fair, I'm going to need more than I'm going to need a third Tottenham slot. What would you say to people who want to pump Richarlison? Just bear in mind it's a punt. We we don't know about his fitness. Even if he's fit, we don't know if he's going to start. He will get minutes. Um, but they may be at the front end or the back end. He's he's not going to play ninety. I wouldn't have thought. Certainly not, not for the next couple of weeks at least. So it, yeah, just it, bear in mind it is a punt. But because he's going to be so lowly owned, it could really pay off. 
if he is fit, would you want him to start on Sunday? Yeah. So who would drop out? Probably Kulisewski. Well, he ain't been playing anywhere, has it? So Johnson, right? Oh, Madison, okay. 10. You know what? Oh. It's Werner, isn't it? No, I... I, I it, well, it's Werner or it's Son. Johnson does not drop out. It's not going to be Son. I mean, I've suggested it, it, this as well. It's not going to be. It won't, he won't do it, but on current form, he's, he's, in, he's in the frame to be dropped. You can't drop Johnson. He's been the the, the, the one that's been dragging us uh, back into games or, or, you know, he's been the difference maker. Werner, because of his speed, he will always create problems. Um, Sun's just been so far off it. And it, it will be a massive call to drop your captain and best player. But he's, he's, he's not there, mate. He's, he's not with it at the moment. I I don't think Richarlison will start no, Sunday. I, I think it will be the same front three. I think it will be Sun up front. I think it'd be Werner left. I think it'd be Johnson right. And I think we have to consider that that could change afterwards for the Chelsea game, subject to parts of what happens. And then obviously Liverpool in 36, you're less fussed about, but that's only three days after Chelsea. So there's a good chance you're going to get some rotation across those two games. Um, similar may well happen in 37 with the Burnley and Manchester City home games as well. What I would clarify is I think you and I, Ricky, are both unhappy with Hyun Ming Sun's performances at the moment and and certainly James Madison as well. I look at it like this though. Could you imagine if Ange left them out and we lost? Yeah. <laughs> he's this it's one it's of those just, he's not doing it. He's no, not doing if, it. If he's gonna make a big call like that, he's got to get it spot on. Because if he misses, um I mean look he's not going to get sacked and people aren't going to start hating him, but it's going to start raising lots and lots of questions. He won't do it. And listen, for all the criticisms, Madison and Son are the two best individual players in the team and most likely to win us a football match, right? Yeah, absolutely. They're just, they're just out of form at the moment in, in reality. Um, Gary Jackson, right? I, I'm going now. I, I saw nothing last night to change my opinion because all I've seen him do is miss big chances anyway this season, so it's no different. Um, talk me out a bit, mate. He's in mine. Um, he's going to play. He's going to play all the time. Um, he's almost certainly, now that he's avoided his bookings, he's now going to get booked probably in each of the next two games. Um, he will probably still get chances. I think we'll still create chances. Um, he's probably going to get fewer chances. But then again, with that said, his confidence to get in the positions doesn't seem to have suffered. So hopefully at some point, something will go in for him. If... Uh, I'm, I'm still going there. Like and Kunku's and Kunku's not going to be fit. He can't be. He can't get match fit this season. He hasn't. He hasn't played. He's, he started two games for us, I think, and we've got what six games left. There's no way for him to get up to speed. Um, Jackson will play if if Unkunku was to start. I, I think he'd start both of them anyway. I think he'd have Jackson left and Unkunku centre, or the other way around, or get him to. So I, I don't think he, there's an issue with Jackson's. You don't think, I mean, there's obviously a little bit of an expected minutes threat there. Um, if Nkunku was back, say, for 37. But you even think under that circumstance, Jackson would just move out wide, possibly. Yeah, I, I think Pochettino's happy with what Jackson does, apart from the finishing. Obviously, nobody's happy with the finishing, but I think he's been playing all right. I think he played... He actually something played there, though, isn't it? Well. You, look at, you look at the finish yeah. against Everton, which now feels like a lifetime ago, but the way mm. he takes that goal, there's something there, isn't there? Yeah. Um, and... He wanted to kick on from that. Then he wanted to um, take the penalty, obviously, to help himself kick on from that. Um, and yeah, like he got, I don't know, the game was too big for him, maybe, let's say, on Saturday. I do, like, I still defend Jackson. Um, this isn't like we've bought a guy, a guy from like someone who has scored goals and then he's come to Chelsea and stopped scoring goals. This isn't the same as when we bought Fernando Torres. We bought Torres thinking this is guaranteed goals and it wasn't. Jackson's never shown that. And Jackson's also really inexperienced. And when we signed him, nobody knew, is he going to be the centre forward for Chelsea or are they going to loan him out and he's one for the future? And then all of a sudden, like Nkunku's injured and Breuer's like gone and suddenly he's like, he's everything and it's all on Jackson. It's like, that can't have been the intention when we bought him. If that was the intention, then we I don't think it's him that we would have bought. And now that's why I, I, I do feel a little bit Sorry for him. I think it's he's like he's a little bit out of his depth in that respect, and he, he could have done with Nkunku next to him. Oh. Um, and I think his all round game has been pretty good. I think Pochettino's still going to play him because I think Pochettino's happy enough with his contribution. I'll go one further. 
if Cole Palmer was ruled out for a couple of weeks, I captain Jackson this week. I'd struggle to captain a Chelsea player if Cole Palmer's ruled out. Would you captain a Tottenham player? Yeah. Do you? You? I guess you would go some. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, what most people so. would do. Yeah, I don't think he's going to do. I mean, when you were talking about that, I was thinking of Rude Hullet when he left out um, Shearer and Duncan Ferguson in the derby against Sunderland and lost. It's like, you know that the things are going wrong for the manager. Yeah. You don't leave out your best players in the derby. Certainly no, no, not, no. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, either, he's, so. he's, 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 so he's going to, he's, he's going to play. Exactly. And then we're going to give up chances. So yeah, I'd be on Sun and, oh. I don't like going to a game where I've captained a player that's playing against Chelsea. But I have done it. Already this season. I mean, well, I'll, I'll be at Stanford Bridge anyway and next Thursday night, mate. And I'm I'm 99 percent certain that Cole Palmer's gonna be my <laughs> captain. It won't be in my mind, mate. I hope he gets no. sent off. Um Jackson over Sun for captaincy, Ricky, if that was a debate. Uh yeah, I I probably would. I I can't and look, not saying that Jackson's been in fantastic. Because people are gonna be listening to this thinking the three of us are delusional, you know that. Yeah, but I, I can't <laughs> I can't captain a player who's in this form. I, I, whether he's got two games or not, I just can't do it. But you know his capability, Ricky. Then that's it with Sonny. And we have been here before, and a light bulb goes off, and you, the the capability and his finishing quality is undeniable, right? Oh, absolutely! Look, he's he's one of the best one on one finishers in the league. Uh, there's there's no doubt about that. And you know, if he's through on goal, you you you'd put your house on him to score. But he hasn't been getting those opportunities. Um, you know, either, either he hasn't been in the right positions, or he's not getting the service, whatever. But he's he's not. He's just not at the races at the moment. And look, I, I, my my thinking on stuff is is very heavily influenced by where we are in the season and where I'm in my mini league. If this was earlier in the season, then yeah, I probably would. I'd I'd I'd, I'd captain him. Captain him. Um, I'm I'm chasing the guy who's like forty points ahead of me. Um, I don't want to be taking punts like that I've got to be safe so that's there's a lot of my, there's a lot of thinking like that in, involved as well but yeah it's a struggle to captain a player that's so out of form Brennan Johnson I would, would captain you say to him over Sun wow that really confidently the thing is though with Sonny the chances are I mean it'll certainly start twice right minutes wise you're probably looking at expected I don't know 140 150 across the two games maybe even more maybe more like 160 maybe across the two because every chance would be like a 90 and a 70 maybe for example johnson can't be anywhere near there on expected minutes can he ricky or or it could 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 we be i've said that i think he's treating him how he treated kudasevsky earlier in the season he's like you're playing all the minutes yeah. to get physically right for the future here and, and that's what it feels like at the start of the season. Johnson come, he, he would play a game, and he'd be he'd be blowing out of his ass after fifty five minutes. And, and Kulusevski was was the same as well. And he's 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 kept Johnson. He's he's brought him into the side. Um, either he's come on as an impact sub and, and made an impact, or he started games. I look, the the one thing for me that was actually really quite shocking was how early Sun went off against Newcastle. I know that the game was done by then, but you know we were still looking for goals, and you take off your main goal scorer. That for me said an, an awful lot about Sun's form and fitness and what Ange is, is trying to do. And I'm not going to suggest that Ange is going to drop Sun or he's not going to play him, but he's he's not afraid to make a sacrifice if a player isn't playing well, no matter who that player is. And on his current form, I just I can't be certain that he's not going to get hauled off again after 60 minutes if it's not going his way. And against the games, the teams that we've got coming up, there's going to be a lot that isn't going his way. There are sites out there that are recommending getting James Madison this week. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> I think those sites need to be closed down. <laughs> no, listen, again, same thing, right? Expected minutes will be higher, although Madison keeps coming off between sort of 60, 70 minutes. It is yeah. worth clarifying. So you probably are sort of 130, 140 expected minutes on matters, but he will almost certainly start twice, I should imagine. And again, you know what the capability of the player is, right? Absolutely. It's just that, it's just at the moment, he's just struggling. I mean, it looks slower to me. Yeah. 
But I, maybe that injury that he had was was more severe than than, than what we thought because he, he hasn't been the same. Uh, he's kind of lost his zip uh, since he come back from injury. So maybe maybe we brought him back too soon. Um, maybe he's still sore. I, I, I would I, I wouldn't know. be surprised if he's if he's carrying an injury. Yeah. On what I'm watching. You we we were we 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 needed him back and yeah I, I think we we've, we've brought him back a little bit too soon maybe. Yeah, could well be the case. So Johnson over Madison for you. Yeah. Gary, if Palmer was out and then people want to go Jackson, they want to go a second Chelsea offensive, does Madueke become a real serious option here? He's probably the most likely to play, if certainly if Palmer wasn't playing, because he plays on like sort of inside forward right or whatever you want to call it. He plays out on the right, cuts in onto his left. I don't think anybody else that we've got really plays there. So he's he's gonna play and he's playing all the time at the moment and He's probably on penalties, but who knows? If it's not Palmer, then it's probably Madueke. He's taken one and he scored it, whereas Jackson's not taken them at various points this season before Palmer became a penalty taker. So Palmer's out, he's taking penalties? Madueke, I think. But, I mean, Jackson's probably going to burst through the door and start arguing me about that as well, isn't he? Well, yeah, but if Palmer's not playing, there's every chance Sterling will be on the pitch as well, right? I can't imagine he's like he can't do it again. He's <laughs> I think he I think even him, surely. Like remember we got another penalty that day and he walked off walked off to the halfway line and then came back when it turned into a free kick. Uh, I think Sterling is no. Just don't don't talk to me about Sterling and penalties. Okay. All right, for clarity, Gary. If you were free Chelsea this week, assuming Palmer's fit, it's what Palmer Jackson and Gusto if fit, if not. Yep. Petrovic, I think. And Ricky, top, top if you had to go Tottenham free. I had to go Tottenham free. Um I'll say Sun, because we know what he can do. Uh definitely Johnson and uh, I'll say Vicaria. Go on, we'll say it. Vicaria. I think Poro will be fit, it looks like. If if Poro's fit, then yeah, it's him. If he's not, then it would be Vicario. I think, as I said, though, I, I think a lot of people are going to end up with Vicario and Poro. I think. I find it too. For goodness sake, don't do too. <laughs> um, listen, I hope that you smash it and you get loads of points. But yeah. I, yeah, don't expect some kids. I, I don't. I don't think Vicario's. Even, I don't think Vicario's got a double point haul since game week two, which feels remarkable. The amount of saves he has to make every week. Well, we, we don't, I'm not keeping the clean sheets, mate. Exactly that. You know, we, and for those of you that think uh, we, we, we're negative Tottenham fans, we've just seen all this before. So we, we, we know what the script is already. Gents, thank you both so much. Let's do predictions before we finish. Uh, Gary, Aston Villa away. Can't see us getting anything there. Um, and it, it depends if, if Palmer's not playing, then probably. Two or three nil, and if he is playing, two or three one to Villa. It's good, this isn't it? Um, uh, certainly, any hope I had of uh, relying on your team to ever do my team a favour absolutely diminished on Tuesday night, and I don't expect you to get anything at Villa Park. No, unfortunately, uh, Ricky, the North London derby. Oh Jesus! Uh, pick a number. No. Oh. No, it's not like that, is it? No, it's not. I mean, it's it not. could be, but it's not. It, well, like that. it could be, but it won't be. Look, I mean, they're, they're in fine form. We're not. Um, sorry, sorry, Tottenham fans. 3 1 Arsenal. It's difficult not to think they'll win, having watched them. Yeah, absolutely. I, on you Tuesday can't night. see anybody beating them. Uh, we are the most likely. Of what that, left, that, that, I, that I do know at the same time, yeah. So, but is is that be, is that just the intensity of the game that's making you say that? Yeah, I mean, it's gonna, it's it is gonna be a high octane atmosphere. You know, even if Villa win against Chelsea, if people are thinking, oh, well, Tottenham won't have nothing to play for. Don't worry about that on Sunday. Absolutely, there, there, there'll be an atmosphere for as long as we're we're in the game, basically, and we'll be right up for it. Um, <sighs> Yeah, you you'd think they'll win, but I but I'll clarify that we can beat them mm. if we get it right on the day and they have like sloppy moments, which they can do, particularly earlier in games. If we can keep it that high, 
we we'll certainly give up chances, but we might create them as well. Yeah. Um, we can beat them, but it's difficult to foresee it. Gary, the game next Thursday. I'll start by saying I hope you beat them, despite what you think that I like them. But what <laughs> I I hope you beat them. It's a London you. thing as well. You don't want to see other London teams win the title, and especially not ones that are managed by Mikel Arteta. I really couldn't give a shit if Fulham won the title, mate. I'm absolutely fine with that. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, that situation has not come up. Next Thursday, I'm going to go for 3-2 to Chelsea. Ricky? Um, but what I had in my head was 2-2. Two, two. I'm, I'm tempted to go 3-2 uh, to Tottenham, but 2-2. Uh, two, two. Yeah, that one at Stamford Bridge will definitely have goals. Yeah, oh, absolutely. There's no way that will be nil-nil. I mean, there's no way any of our games is going to be nil-nil, but yeah, I... I I sent. We'll score at Stamford Bridge, I think, Gary. But mm-hmm. so will you, sure definitely you as well. Um, the Arsenal game, I'm not sure. I, I can feel like it could be low scoring, but it could also end something like four two to them or something as well. That's that's how it feels. All right, cheers, gents. Good stuff, Gary. Anything you want to promote before we finish? No. If you're going to follow me anywhere, follow me on Duolingo at Gary Reza. Gary R E Z A. Duolingo. Right. Well, nobody else has ever done that, have they? On your podcast, I've never heard of it. Is it Lingo? Is it better than Twitter? Of course, it's a language learning app. Oh, yeah. I, 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 clearly, <laughs> my language is so perfect. I obviously don't need any lessons with any of it's that. It's mainly for foreign clearly. languages, but they do do English if you need that as well. No, well in you, serious, in seriousness, I struggle with English. So you, you could learn Portuguese, mate. So you can speak with Sudge. Okay, obrigado. Uh, Ricky, <laughs> anything you want to promote before we go? Oh, just Patreon, obviously. Sign up, fellas. Well, you you are probably signed up for listening to this, but sign up. Cheers, buddy. Love you lots. Thank you both so much, guys. Uh, so you'll be back with me for the second part of the Game Week 34 review podcast tomorrow. Just sees me say, Gary, good luck Saturday and next Thursday. Ricky, good luck, pal. Say it. Come on, Tottenham. Cue music, please, man, child. 